Good afternoon. My name is Allison Kaplan, and I am Director of Education at the National First Ladies Library in Canton, Ohio. I want to thank everyone for joining us today for the latest installment in our film series. I wanted to mention a couple of programs coming up. If you've been watching films with us from the start, you may be interested in our March 9th program, which will be the film Toni Morrison, Pieces of Me. And we will be in conversation with Marilyn Sanders Mobley from Case Western Reserve University, who is a member of the Toni Morrison Society, as well as a scholar. Uh, so we're really excited to discuss um, Morrison's work with her. I think it should be a good film. Um, if you are registering for these film programs from out of state, we will be sending you a link about a week to two weeks before the film. Um, you can screen those online thanks to Stark Libraries program. Um, they use a service called Hoopla and we programmed partnered with them to program the film series. So if you are registering from within Ohio, we ask that you register for a library card online and we'll send you a link to that for the film and access it through Hoopla. And if you're out of state, we send you a link to the film. Um, and if you're a member of Stark Library, you have access to the film on Hoopla as well as all the different titles we've been watching. So we're really grateful to Stark Library for that opportunity. And if you have questions about how to access the film, don't be afraid to reach out to us and we're happy to give you more information um, or information on past films. So following National First Ladies Library on social media or accessing our Eventbrite are great ways to find out about those upcoming programs. We also have a program for children that has been running this school year that is inspired by women in STEM careers um, or STEAM careers because today we're going to be talking about the arts and we've been doing some art as well. Um, so this month is inspired by the Carters and the Carter Foundation. So um, we have a First Lady connection there. We've been talking about clean water and how the Carters have worked to make clean water accessible to people all over the world. We're also talking about Flint, um, Michigan, and water crisis um, near, nearby. So you will be able to learn about all of those things, as well as make your own water filter. So that program has a $15 fee and you get a box full of supplies um, and history stuff in the mail. So it's really fun. If you have a child or a grandchild that you think might be interested, this month is a great month to try it out and learn more about something that is impacting us all. So that's an exciting program coming up. And if you are a First Lady junkie, then February 18th, you definitely want to check out our talk with a curator. We're gonna be looking in Angelica Van Buren's purse and finding out what is inside. Um, I don't think we're gonna actually find much inside, but we're gonna get to really look at this cool bag and um, examine it up close and live. So that should be really fun. We also have an active book club and we have a fictional book that we're reading this month inspired by um, Grant. So we're excited about that. And then March 3rd, we have our legacy lecture coming up. That lecture is inspired by the Hardings and the Hardings site, um, the homestead, which has been refurbished and reopening to the public soon. So we will be connecting with their director who will give us some behind the scenes information on um, that building and its opening. And if you like to get crafty and you're interested in the arts, we have a First Ladies Night program coming up on March 22nd. And we're gonna be connecting with a calligrapher who actually worked at the White House for three different administrations. So she'll be talking about her experience working there, um, all the amazing place cards that she made for 
presidents, first ladies, royals, um, and maybe some behind the scenes gossip as well as some crafting tips. So we are super duper excited about that. I think it should be fun. So that's a preview of what is coming up. And now we're gonna transition to our program today. And we are going to give you a little bit of a preview of the film. So if you haven't seen the film yet, that's okay. Um, she Makes Comics is chock full of information, gives you a lot of behind the scenes history of women in the comic book field. So what we'll do to start today before I introduce our speaker is we'll take a look at the preview of the film and you'll get a better idea of what it is like. So let's pull that up. People are aware that there are women in comics and there are more and more women in comics, but there have always been women in comics. There have been women in comics for decades. During the 1950s and 1960s, the readership of comics was split 55% female and 45% male. And I always read comics when I was a kid. Our house was like a bedroom and then the rest of the house was comics. The more superheroes took hold, the less anything else got any priority. The kinds of things that women creators wanted to do weren't really the kinds of things that were mainstream. So we sat down and we talked quite a bit about how we wanted to form a comic. Nobody had done women's bodies from a woman's point of view. The potential was there that comics could do anything. We decided to get even with men. and that's really exciting to see. You can tell any kind of story in comics, and let's really try to do progressive material always. You write stories for people, and if you have more women involved, you're probably gonna have more women reading. Female fandom has exploded. There is a community out there. Just go in, dive in, head first. It's gonna be awesome. I'm an artist, and I don't do anything for anybody. It's me and the paper, and, and total honesty. To bring all of these women together, these smart, creative, powerful women together, telling their stories, telling the history of women in comics, stands as such an amazing example to women out there, to girls out there, that there are a lot of women in this club and that there's always room for more. Sometimes you need to get away from the kids for grown-up time or get away from the So that hopefully gave you a little more insight about the film. She Makes Comics traces the fascinating history of women in the comic book industry. And despite popular assumptions about the comics world, women have been writing, drawing, and reading comics since the medium's beginnings in the late 19th century. And today, there are scores of women involved in comics and its vibrant fan culture. So we're really excited to present, um, introduce you to one of those women today in our region, um, Sequoia Bostic is joining us for a discussion today. Uh, Sequoia is an illustrator, maker, and designer living in Cleveland, and Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio. After earning her BFA in illustration from the Cleveland Institute of Art in 2014, she pursued a career as a resident teaching artist where she works with local youth in growing their visual art skills, all while growing her own artistic practice as a multidisciplinary freelancer. Bright colors, dreamlike figures, cute and playful characters inhabit the stories she brings to life with both traditional and digital media. She is a project-oriented artist and loves working with others on large assignments. Her work has been featured in Cleveland Scene Magazine, 
Vagabond Comics, which I have here with me today, Idea Stream, The Can Journal, and The Plain Dealer. You can also find her works in Cleveland Botanical Gardens, the Cleveland Museum of Art, and Maelstrom Collaborative Arts. So Sequoia, thank you so much for joining us today. We're really happy to have you. Happy to be here. <laughs> so um, just starting the discussion again, the film was chock full of information that I did not know about comic book making, about the early scene and the history of comic books. But I want to start the conversation just talking about you and your background. Can you tell us a bit about um, what inspired you to get interested in making and publishing your own comics? Um, so I actually uh, started by reading manga, which is, you know, pretty popular along, uh, amongst like young, our, uh, young kids and stuff like that, but really popular for some reason amongst like children of color. Um, and maybe it's because it's really easily accessible. There's a lot of it out there and they're easier to get a hold of than like picking up like Batman or something like that. Um, but yeah, I was one of those kids that, you know, went to the library after school and like just flooded the teen section or flooded the kids section and it was just full of comic books. Um, I started wanting to draw my own, I think in middle school, once again, uh, just being inspired by just telling stories uh, specifically about things that happened throughout the day or uh, about my friends or about my family. So those kinds of stories. Can you tell us a little bit about the comics that you make? Some of us who are just starting out and um, learning about comics or um, have an understanding of comics from the past may only be interested or aware of superhero comics. Um, what kind of comics do you make and how do they kind of reflect the larger comic book scene out there? Um, so uh, the comics I make personally for myself, uh, they are autobio comics. Um, I'm really just super interested in like, you know, people's stories and it doesn't have to be like, you're this amazing person that has superpowers. I'm just interested in like what you, what your life's about or what my life's about. So I like to write those kinds of stories. Um, uh, and same with like anthology based work. I run uh, Vagabond Comics, which is an all ages anthology. Um, we usually pick themes for each of our issues and they're not, you know, like superheroes or indie comics or anything like that. It's more just like subject matter. And so people can kind of tell like, you know, any kind of story that they want, uh, which I think is more fun. So the film talked a little bit about manga at the end, but I wondered as far as thinking about the early history of comics, was there anything that you learned or got you really excited that you wanted to check out that was discussed in the film or things that might've influenced you? Um, so recently I've actually started learning a little bit more about Jackie Orms. Um, like it was something that a friend of mine who isn't like a comic book artist or anything, he like brought it up one day. He goes, wow, like this vagabond thing kind of reminds me of how Jackie Orms was kind of like bringing comic artists together and like working on comic strips. So yeah, I started learning a little bit more about her and the fact that she came up in the movie, in the film, I was like, wow, like she really is popular. I should probably get on that in terms of researching. Um, but like uh, just seeing uh, a lot of the artists on there that I actually met in real life or know was really exciting to say, hey, I'm glad that, um, that we're getting ourselves out there and that we're learning more about like, you know, female and like uh, people of color in comics. Yeah, I realized that I had encountered Jackie Orm's work before too. And I ended up like looking through some of it at the library. It was really exciting and it's really funny, but also political and biting um, for its time. So I, I also was like, oh, wow, this is somebody I want to learn more about and check out. So um, I'm glad that that inspired you too. Um, so most of your comics you mentioned are, um, are inspired by your own experiences in your own life, but is there like a superhero or heroine that you connect with? Um, I connect with the uh, writing of like Batman. I love like uh, Batman and its take on like, like humanity, you know, that's affected by society and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So those kind of like dark stories, I don't know, they, 
they speak to me in a way. And um, I really do enjoy uh, Storm from Marvel Comics, like just her whole background and like, you know, mixing like the kind of African uh, spiritual storytelling with just like a black female superhero is super cool. I was really struck by um, how women like um, were, were behind creating some of those superheroes because uh, being in Northeast Ohio, we often hear about Superman and the roots of Superman. But when I was learning about Aquaman in the film, I was surprised that a woman was behind the development of that. So that was really kind of interesting and cool. Um, it was also pretty interesting to see that so many comics were geared towards women from the beginning. So early 20th century comics weren't always around superheroes. There were a lot of like romances and women were part of the, the main readership. Um, did you have a favorite era of comics when you were watching the film, something that struck you? Um, actually, no. And I, I had to think about that for a long time. Like, I was like, yeah, I, I think I just like just comics and like as a whole, like I enjoy the fact that there's so many different genres and different eras of comics. Um, yeah, so it was really hard, like trying to figure out that question. And I would say, I don't know if this counts, but I really enjoyed when they re re-released like the New 52 uh, series of comics through DC, like just like make, once again, those stories where they made them darker and like stuff like that, like the Brightest Day comics and uh, the Darkest Night with Green Lantern, all of that. Those are just super cool and super interesting. And I love how they kind of rework the costumes and stuff like that. Um, Can you talk about it, your experience being a woman and a person of color um, in comic book shops and in comic cons? Um, what is that like? The The film kind of describes how disarming it can be to go into a place, um, whether I have experiences thinking about it going into a record store, but like going into a comic shop as a woman and a person of color. Um, what has your experience been? And do you have recommendations for women as the, if they're thinking about um, reading comics, if they want to go into the comic shop, how should they prepare themselves? What should they be looking for? And how should they expect to be treated? Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I was watching the film, that part like made me laugh because of how spot on it was. Uh, for the most part, I was like, wow, yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate. Um, I think like it's definitely gotten a little bit better. Um, it, I personally haven't had an experience uh, where I felt um, out of place at a comic book shop. Like uh, Cleveland has some really good bookstores uh, here and they're all pretty welcoming and pretty like inclusive and stuff. So, uh, but in terms of shows, like that's a completely different story. It's amazing how many shows I would go to with Vagabond Comics, me and my uh, friend who run this anthology, we're both women uh, and who think that we're just assist assistants there selling the books for the writer who they think is a dude. And I'm like, well, excuse me. <laughs> but yeah, and it's happened so many times where it's just like, what, you don't think I'm capable of writing comics or making comics and that our books look like professionally made? And, I don't know, it's like ridiculous how many times it's happened. Um, and I think it's also just really rewarding once you know you do get to just tell them off and be like, excuse me, yes, I am the artist and the writer of this anthology. And yes, I did make this on my own and all of this stuff. So yeah, it's, it's super weird. Um, but yeah, I think because uh, women are showing up more at these shows and showing up more in comic book shops just naturally because of the kind of content that's coming out, um, that it's becoming more welcoming. Is there anything you think that um, some of these uh, shows or um, stores need to change to be more inviting to women and people of color or something they could do? Um, that I don't know. I think they just need to just, you know, stop talking. <laughs> uh, just let us, you know, we just want to come in, look for what we want to look for and get it and go. Like, I mean, I don't, I know there's a lot of people, like, I guess they call it like mansplaining, where you, they think that you just want to hear the descriptions, but 
uh, like the film said, like women have been involved in comics and reading comics since, you know, the beginning. So just let us come in and do our thing. Like if we ask, you know, that that's one thing. So I read that that you were involved in one of the comic book shows up in Cleveland, Genghis Khan. Can you tell us a little bit about that and your experience doing that? Um, so yes, uh, Genghis Khan is uh, one of Cleveland's largest comic book shows. It's not like mainstream, it's an indie show, which is great because, um, you know, you get to interact a little bit more with the artists and the writers of comics and stuff like that. It's not like, you know, super uh, regulated like Wizard World or anything like that. Um, but it's fun um, because we do it once a year and it's usually at the end of the year and it's a show that a lot of Cleveland artists and some artists from all over like, you know, the Midwest and the East Coast look forward to every year. Um, it started about 11 years ago uh, and it was um, created by Kevin Chapp and uh, John G. Uh, Shiner Comics. They are both were both local Cleveland artists and then they actually recently uh, passed the role on to myself and uh, two other women actually. Um, oh, sorry, not women. Um, a, a, a transgender gender and uh, and a, a, another friend. So um, yeah, we run it now as Stoplight Press, but it is Genghis Khan uh, still. Um, unfortunately, the past year we haven't been able to run the show for obvious reasons, but uh, we uh, yeah we we do like to put that out every year. What are some of the comic book artists? that you think that we should be looking at today? Um, if, if you were recommending things for someone just getting into comics, um, mm -hmm. they could be mainstream, they could be indie. Um, what kinds of things do you think would get our audience excited about comics? Um, like I think um, steering away from superheroes, unfortunately, uh, a lot of I know when I teach, like a lot of kids are just not interested in like superhero comics. So we can show them that there are comics out there that are, you know, that are, you know, all types of genres. I feel like they would be more willing to do it. Uh, that was something like when I work with kids, uh, they, they found that like a lot of kids like horror or like scary stories or stuff that's really funny. So like bringing more of that kind of stuff into, uh, into the world would be really good. It's interesting that kids are rearing away from superheroes as far as like what kinds of comics they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any recommendations for people who have kids or grandkids as far as like what they might get, how they could get into or how they could start making their own comics? Um, so there are like a lot of art organizations specifically here in Cleveland, but all over that do offer like comic book classes and like I teach a few of them as well um but uh yeah so giving them an opportunity to try it out and to learn about you know comic books as a whole and like what kind of stories they can tell and stuff like that but also just like bringing more comics into like the school libraries um so that they can kind of see what if there is out there um for them to check out and I would say even recommending um more like a uh, up-to-date comic artists so yes we can always put the classics in but also bringing in like the fact that there are younger uh comic artists out there making more i guess relatable content for them and it's good to see now that um graphic novels have started to make the reading comic books at school a little bit more acceptable for kids because i'm mm -hmm. starting to see a lot more of them around too so mm -hmm. i think that's pretty interesting and significant as far as making comics a more not only legitimate art form but like legitimate for your reading uh, or your classroom um as opposed to like put that away you need to be reading this so mm -hmm. that's exciting for kids because I know yeah as a, a kid that it wasn't that way for me. <laughs> yeah, I do notice like they've started going more of on the educational route, which is exciting because that means you can still learn stuff um, from, from reading comics. Like, I mean, comics in general is just good for learning how to read because you can associate words and pictures and it makes it a lot easier. Um, but also like, 
I always tell this story to my students. Uh, when I was in high school, I used to read this uh, Egyptian manga called, well, it's not Egyptian, it's a Japanese uh, manga uh, about Egyptian, like the Egyptian artwork. It was Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and I ended up using Yu-Gi-Oh! to pass my art history test because there were questions that kind of related to some of the content that was happening in the book at the time. And I would remember it, it's like there was a question about uh, Alexander the Great, like he was one, one of the people that conquered, came in and like conquered Egypt and stuff. And like, that was actually a question on the test. And I was like, oh man, like this is exciting. Like I totally just watched this episode and read this manga the other day and ended up getting a hundred on the test, so. Amazing. So I read Babysitter's Club books a lot as a kid, and I've started to see those reappear in graphic novel form. And that's been exciting to me, and I've even bought the first two, and I need to crack them open soon and start reading them. Um, but it, it's been fun to, to make that connection and see people get excited about things from the past in new forms. So one of the other things I wanted to talk about was comic book conventions because one of the big elements of that seems to be the cosplay or for people who aren't familiar the role playing and um in the film there was an example of a woman who was doing that and was one of the early kind of performers in that so I wanted to talk to you about that element I don't know if it's something that you see at more independent comic book conventions, but a lot of times it's women kind of taking on those roles and they're being gazed at and consumed. And um, But at the same time, a lot of young women are using that as a gateway to connecting to a superhero and taking on superhero power. So I wanted to ask you if it's something that you've ever done yourself and what your feelings are about it. So I've actually like always wanted to do it. Like well, I used to go to a lot of anime conventions and uh, comic book shows when I was like a teenager. Um, and I was always fascinated by, yeah, the costumes were amazing and how like people can kind of change their entire, I guess, character and become someone else for a day and, you know, get that same amount of like praise and admiration. Um, and, but I like, for me, I, I was always a low budget artists for the most part so I the costumes that I would pull together would definitely like on the same lines as like paper plates and mache and stuff like that um but yeah it was always really cool to see them I think it's like you know super awesome that you can put that amount of work into something and get like a nice you know payback from it is there any um character that you would want to role play as yourself definitely storm that would be amazing yeah like her costume is fantastic. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, well, let's see. I think that we've gotten through most of the questions that I had for you today, um, but I wanted to give people a chance to hear more about how they can connect with you, how they can see your work and how they can support what you're doing. So can you share a little bit more information about that with us? Um, so yes, uh, I, like I said, run a local comic book anthology called Vagabond Comics. Um, we have our own uh, website where you can purchase uh, copies of our book. It features um, between the 12 issues that are out now, I believe there's like at least 50 artists um, from both male, female, LGBTQ uh, plus and everything. So you can definitely go to vagabondcomics.storeandv.com to check those out. Um, my own personal website, Sequoia Bostic Art, will feature uh, pretty much everything that I do as an artist. So you can check out my work there, as well as um, I started up a Patreon recently to get started on funding my um, first uh, a full graphic novel, which is not, I don't know exactly what the name is going to be yet, but uh, it's going to be another auto bio uh, that's based on the, the the thousand year flood in Nashville, Tennessee, which is where I'm from originally. So that'll be hopefully coming out in the next year or two. Uh, but you can check out Patreon at Sequoia Bostic Art there as well. 
So and Patreon is just a way for people to support artists and podcasters and people who are doing cool things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like a, a monthly subscription service uh, where you can subscribe to tiers and the artists will offer like a variety of things within those tiers. So like you can down, uh, donate as little as a dollar to just support them or, you know, as much as you want, really. Um, I think my tiers are set at one, five and ten. Um, and so you can get like little mini art prints from me as well if you back the highest tier. Uh, but also you get to see kind of like my process and like what I'm working on and stuff that I don't get to post on Instagram because I do like, I guess, filter what I like to post. But then now you get to see the nitty gritty of it. <laughs> so the graphic novel is something that you're working on now. What other kinds of things have you been doing? It looked like on your website too that you do some illustration work for organizations too. Yeah, so um, a lot of the work that I do is educational. Like I call it children's media. It's educational based. Uh, it's usually for kids or for like you know their enjoyment. Um, so I create like uh, characters that can be used in like you know pamphlets or in like how to things. Um, mm -hmm. Usually like comics that talk about like you know, process of how to, you know, how to do things. One example is I did a comic for Wix for Kids, uh, where it kind of explains how you can donate your hair or how to apply to get a, a hair piece if you're, or a kid that's dealing with hair loss in some shape or form. So you can like read that comic and it's like, you know, broken down so that kids can understand it, so that parents can understand it, you know, clearing up that kind of gray area that, you know, that, uh, that comes with uh, trying to get involved with that or organization. Um, but also like things with like the botanical gardens, it's usually like I did the map for the children's garden so that kids can have like artwork, but also be able to navigate the gardens because it's a maze, a literal maze. Um, so that's always really exciting. So there are a lot of opportunities um, in comic book making too to transition to illustration. And you've also illustrated a picture book as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bridget and Bot uh, is a children's book that I actually did for my senior thesis when I was in college. Um, it's actually also more of a personal note. It's based on my little sister. Uh, we're nine years apart uh, and there we were a big family. So I wanted to kind of show her like some of the experiences that I had when I was her age. Uh, at the time, she was uh, nine years old. So um, when I wrote it, uh, I was just kind of recapped uh, like a experience me and my older brother used to have where we used to uh, be latchkey kids and destroy the house and clean it back up before my mom would come home. Uh, so that's kind of what the story is. Well, Sequoia, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we've been talking to Sequoia Bostic, who is a comic book maker and illustrator living in Cleveland, Ohio, as part of our film series. Um, we watched the film She Makes Comics. And if you haven't had a chance to see the film, you can go on the National First Ladies Library Facebook page or Eventbrite page and register for this program to get a link or be directed to the Stark Library to screen the film, which I highly recommend. And Sequoia, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been great to connect with you. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone, and have a great day.